I don't know if you guys know, you probably do know, kids still like watching videos. They I watch do them on know. YouTube, I they don't know. watch them on MTV. Does that make you guys sad? No. The thing you built that was based on music videos does not show music videos and no one knows about they that were anymore. Still playing. I, I left. I, I get off. <laughs> I did love the logo on the internet. Did you see the logo on the internet where it had the M S A W and it had T F, uh, the music? Uh, what the fuck happened to the music? So, you guys built this amazing thing 30 plus years ago. You had great taste. You, you were really good at curating stuff and, and picking stuff out. So what did you learn building MTV that's applicable today? And then what did you have to sort of unlearn because it doesn't work anymore in a world where there's, n there's no longer any scarcity? If you say, what did we do is we listened to the consumer. And what the consumer was in search of is the same thing the consumer's in search of today, which is total control over their lives. The debate used to be at these cable shows was, is it going to be narrowcast or broadcast? Meaning, should one network have a little bit of everything or should each network have only one thing and let the consumer be the programmer. And that was the big revelation. In essence, we let the consumer put together their array of programming from a little bit of news from CNN, a little bit of music from us, they want kids stuff, sports stuff, etc. We're still on the same journey. We're still doing exactly the same thing. Technology just has allowed us to slice it and dice it slimmer and slimmer and give the consumer more and more control. I mean, we built MTV. It was the first TV network ever that the brand was the TV network. And I think the challenge today is even greater to have a brand that people understand and they know what to expect when they get there. Tom, you've now watched this now at, at MTV and now you're participating in Vice. I mean, these guys are saying, look, it's the same thing. You just have to make an awesome product and people will come to it. Is it that simple? Well, it's not simple to do that, but that is the core competency I think that you need. You're not gonna be any good and no one's gonna pay any attention to you if what you're doing doesn't have that engagement and resonance. And I think it's really important for any kind of youth brand that has any real resonance, that it is organic that the people who work and live there are sort of on a crusade. They know this, they're the, they're the audience. So it's not like a business that was concocted in some boardroom. So just by osmosis, they know what's going on and there's plenty of ideas coming in. And uh, that's, I think, been the key really to the ongoing success of any kind of enduring media brand is having the demo itself running the show with a few adults around, but basically that. I was just sitting here thinking for one second, you know, it's tough to go from cool to uncool and back to cool. It can be done. And, um, you know, I think one of the things MTV suffered from, like a lot of companies, is it, it got really, really successful, really profitable, really like, you know, sort of Wall Street oriented and all that kind of thing. And I used to think you have to hire people who could not be gainfully employed anywhere else. And so generally, I think it's about people. And, um, you know, I absolutely believe that's an enduring brand. I absolutely believe it has another act. Um, I think you just have to have the right... Yeah, well, look, at the you got to be at a crusade, like Tom said. Crusade, belief, passion. I mean, that's what makes stuff happen. You're not always right, um, but, you know, then later on, it's like Bob said, it is, there's popularity in this are, are, are you Do you, look. Are you using your gut less, either because there's more data or because maybe you're, you're farther removed from, from the, the core demographic? It's the mix of the math and the magic. I want to find out from all the data what's out there. Okay, I know what's going on. Now I have to have some, ma I have to have some magic. The good news is today, with data flowing the way it is, almost everybody can have access to the math. Now, you need a good data scientist, I think of as a creative person, to figure out, wait a minute, I just saw a pattern here. I just saw a correlation that sort of reads this math as magic and figures out something. Because what we're really in search of always is we're in search of an epiphany.